Hello, my name is Jill Bray Bowen, CEO of Northwestern Medical Center and your host of the NMC Health Beat Show, dedicated to discussing important and very interesting healthcare topics. Today I'm joined by Jonathan Billings, our Vice President of Planning and Community Relations, and also Sarah Gemley, who is the Manager of Case Management at NMC. We've got an interesting topic um, for you today. It's related to a large-scale investment in population health. So thank you both for joining me here today for this interesting conversation. Our pleasure. Thank you, Jill, for having us. Yeah, you mm -hmm. bet. So I'd like to first start off just to ground us all, because this has to do with the hospital budget. And so what, how does the budget get developed and what's the approval mechanism look like? Sure. So the hospital budget is developed by our leadership team working with our managers and medical staff members and goes through the hospital board and so is approved by the community representatives on our board of directors and then actually in Vermont it goes to the Green Mountain Care Board which is an appointed um, board, regulatory mm -hmm. board, that oversees the hospital budgets across the state and we go in and make a presentation and make the case for why our budget is appropriate for our community and appropriate within Vermont, and then they act on it. And this year, the hospital, Northwestern Medical Center, put forth a request to lower our rates 8%. And wow. it's not something that people <laughs> typically <laughs> think of, but we're, we have such um, a financial um, ability within our community because of the strong community support and utilization that we're able to make that even with having prices that are already below average within the state and having the lowest cumulative rate increase in the past 13 years. Impressive. So it, it's quite it's quite a team <laughs> effort. The, the work that the, the hospital team puts in to, to keep health care as affordable as possible even though it is still very expensive and we continue to work on that really manifested itself this year with that eight percent reduction in charges interestingly enough this so year say, so what happened with yes. that um, <laughs> interesting enough the green mountain care board challenged us um, to see whether or not we could take an additional two percent out of that budget as they looked at overall health care costs mm -hmm. not just at nmc but across the state and with our rankings of being below average in charges and such low rate increases and already being one of the few hospitals that are reducing costs, our team went back to the Green Mountain Care Board and said, rather than take that money out of the community, let's put it back into the community through population health. And they agreed to entertain a presentation and we had a team mm -hmm. that Sarah was part of that worked very hard, very quickly mm -hmm to rise to the occasion and go back to the Green Mountain Care Board and say, here's a different way to invest that money. Rather than take it out of the community, let's pour it into the community through population health and bring down long-term health care costs through prevention. And so that's the path we're on here. So population health, which you sort of answered that, how would you define what population health is? So we're, we're talking to the community and kind of what's that buzzword? Mm -hmm. You know, population health for me is moving away from paying providers, physicians, or hospitals every time they see a patient and really saying to a collaborative team of providers and agencies, this is your population, keep them healthy. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're rewarded, you're reimbursed for keeping that population healthy. And so it's in your interest to prevent disease, to improve health, mm -hmm. uh, rather than being in the business of moving patients through and making sure you see lots of sick patients. And so it's a complete shift for the American healthcare system, but it's something that we believe in and that is starting to happen. And so this was a chance for Northwestern to say to the Green Mountain Care Board, let's start in this direction. Let's, let us take on a piece of this. A little risky, but uh, exciting. Yeah, it is. It is exciting. And you see it happening elsewhere in the country, and it, mm -hmm. we think it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's the details of this? So what are we going to do with that 2%? That 2% works out to be just about a million dollars, and it allows us to accelerate the work of Rise Vermont in the community. That is a, a community campaign getting us to embrace healthy lifestyles and really focusing on prevention in our schools, in our work sites, in our municipalities, in our businesses. And so we're able to move that forward faster and deeper than we had originally planned. And we'll be partnering with the Alberg School in particular as part of this to embed mm -hmm. a health coach there. 
um, were able to expand the piloting of a lifestyle medicine clinic as a supplement to primary care, as an option for folks who really need deeper assistance with personal behavior change. Dr. Elizabeth Fontaine and her team will be able to offer additional pilot programs of this intensive therapeutic lifestyle change program. Mm. And then we're also able to reach into the primary care practices, a two in particular, Northwestern Primary Care and Northwestern Georgia Health Center, and wrap around our most vulnerable population with case management. And that's where Sarah ah, and her team. Ah, Sarah, goes. what's case management? <laughs> you know what's interesting? This shift in healthcare um, is happening in care management as well. So there are a couple of terms: case management and care management, right? Mm -hmm. So case management is is very much sort of this older term, which is more um, one by one volumes of patients, and this one by one case by case by case handling folks. Now we're looking at care management, which is really this overall, you know, fits in with population health and really is about um, caring for whole people, whole populations, whole communities. Um, so care management is one of these um, uh, departments in our organization that really is a hinge of the whole care team. It really helps to understand people um, in their own situations, really assess all of their needs, head to toe, top to bottom, left to right, everywhere, um, and really wanting to understand um, what are folks, you know, what are what are our barriers to being healthy? Mm -hmm. um, what do we need? What is already going on? What are what can we do to prevent? Um, some chronic health conditions, and then how can we support people in handling their conditions that they already have? Um, healthcare is really shifting in um, helping to give people the tools to handle their own um, chronic conditions. For example, so for diabetes, um, things like um, you know they they call them red flag tools or zone tools, where people can really start to understand their symptoms and respond to them appropriately. Um, rather than not really knowing what to do and calling a healthcare provider, um, they have some initial tools to get started. They understand their condition better and can really respond in a way that helps the overall care team um, take mm -hmm. care of them. So care management consists of both RNs. Um, some have bachelor's degrees, some master's degrees, some associates. Um, and then there's also social work and mental health care managers. Um, and they help us with things like um, applications for insurance or for different resources. We help people manage chronic conditions in a medical way as nurses, but we also help them um, to apply for benefits and resources and then find, um, uh, you know, information and things about uh, social issues, so homelessness and um, maybe they're having trouble affording their medications, um, insurance questions, a wide variety of things. And we operate both in the hospital, uh -huh. so we have an inpatient team. We have um, an RN care manager in our emergency department that works alongside a really wonderful team of folks down there, which includes um, mental health providers and other folks. Um, and then we have oncology and palliative care in the outpatient arena. So um, they're really available to Franklin County at large for oncology and palliative care things. Um, and then we're developing in this population health world um, really um, a full spectrum of care management services in primary care. So in partnership with Candace Collins and others in the, in the primary care realm, um, we are developing a team. So both an RN, in, an RN care manager in both practices, Northwestern Primary Care and Georgia Health Center. Um, and then also um, another position which is really focused on um, kind of the whole mind body, um, you know, spectrum of, of needs. So looking at mental health um, wellness coaches, we haven't quite arrived on exactly what they're going to be, um, but either a master's prepared social worker or licensed clinical social worker, or um, someone with a master's in psychology that can help with counseling um, and mental health diagnosis and suggested treatment. So it's really looking at this integrated mental health model. Um, there, there are a wide variety of really exciting things going on in primary care right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow. It <laughs> really lot. is a lot of change it going is. on. But, yeah. but you know what? It all is, seems to be for the better of the patient Absolutely. and for care and mm -hmm. a more informed patient and more engaged patient. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, can you link up um, care management inpatient? We also have something going on in the emergency department right. and then this new focus. So what will this look like for the patient and what's the outcomes that you anticipate? Sure. So um, for the patient, what we really hope is a seamless 
um, transition of services. So if they have a need, whatever it is, they need help, they're not sure how to pay their rent this month, for example, doesn't seem like a health concern. But if someone doesn't have a stable place to live, mm -hmm. that can impact their health greatly. Um, if they have a chronic condition and they um, have trouble paying their electric bill, then they don't have a fridge that is functioning, then they're not able to store their insulin properly. So there are a lot of um, what we call social determinants of health. So issues that come up in everyone's life that can impact their everyday life, including chronic conditions. Um, so diabetes is just a good example of that, where you really need a stable home environment um, to most, uh, I don't know if properly is the right word, but to um, respond to your health needs um, as best you can. So um, so the to the patient, we're hoping that if they go for a primary care visit, that if anything comes up that is outside of, of what that provider can do for them, you know, they need a medication adjustment or something like that, um, that our care management team is able to meet with them, um, to assess what their needs are, and to really get them connected with what they need. Um, sort of a healthcare buddy is how I think of care management, you know, that we really try um, to work right alongside the entire care team and assess what their needs are. Terrific. Yeah. Now I think there's some flexible funding Indeed. in this mm -hmm. money that we have. So yeah. what's what's going to happen with that? You know, so um, a lot of times in healthcare, there's this um, sort of bucket of other things, you know, that there's no program for that. Or, um, for example, home health is a good example, where home health is this phenomenal service where nurses, physical therapists, et cetera, um, will go into your home if you're not able to leave, meaning if it's too hard, if, it's, if you're too sick, um, that sort of thing. So, um, but not everyone who needs home health um, is what we call homebound, and those are guidelines set by um, insurance companies and Medicare included. And um, so sometimes folks need services which don't fit into a program. So, um, you know, having a stable place to live is one of those mm -hmm. um, situations where um, maybe a person is in between insurances and for the next two and a half weeks, they literally don't have a way to pay for their medications. So some of these funds are gonna help us to get this money in the hands of the folks on the ground doing the work, working directly with patients um, and being able to um, essentially meet the needs um, and meet these unmet needs in our current healthcare system. Wow, so if we needed to pay for a couple weeks of this or that mm -hmm. to help them bridge, right. that's what that money is used that's for. Right. That's yep. pretty remarkable. And then the care management team will help them plan for when that two and a half weeks is up. So mm -hmm. the whole point is that we really prepare folks to be successful. Um, and success is different for different people. Everyone has different goals in their health care. Um, and so we really want to understand what people's individual goals are, help them work towards that. Um, and for different people, some people, the you know, a perfect A1C, for example, managing their diabetes mm -hmm. is not their number one goal. Having a safe place to live is. So it's terrific. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Well, our time, I think we could talk about this all day. <laughs> um, this is wonderful stuff, how we're taking care of our community. Uh, but Jonathan, how we, what's the evaluation? How are we going to know if we're successful when we go back to the Green Mountain Care Board in less than a year? You know, what's our story going to look like? Our, our story, hopefully, is going to look um, very much as in measurable success. Mm -hmm. um, one of the aspects of our presentation, our request to them, was a multifaceted dashboard of specific health indicators that we are looking for. Um, we've looked into aspects of um, non-emergent uh, use of our emergency department. Mm -hmm. We've looked at readmissions to the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, we have looked at the behavior change and the positive health impact that the prevention pieces can have. And we've predicted to the Green Mountain Care Board how far we think we can get in a year mm -hmm. by investing in this. And so we really do see it as a partnership with the Green Mountain Care Board and as a pilot that it is now incumbent upon our teams mm -hmm. to work with our patients, deliver those results, go back to the regulators of Vermont <laughs> and say, this works, and be able to show that it prevents people's conditions from spiraling, that if they do have that electricity to keep their insulin cold so they can manage their diabetes, mm -hmm. they don't spiral into far more expensive right. diabetic conditions. Mm -hmm. And so it's money well spent and that's what we're looking for in healthcare is money well spent, is that value piece. And so we're working on a path to go back to the regulators and say, this was the right thing to do. Here's the, the actual impact that shows that and let's keep going in this direction. Sounds exciting. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. And uh, this is the right direction for every community to take is to focusing on population health. So thank you for 
for taking that on. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you for being here today. Thank you, Joe. My pleasure. Glad to. Mm -hmm. This is Jill Bray Bowen, your host of the Health Beat Show. And it's not just NMC that's working hard to take care of the community. We're working with so many community partners that we're grateful for. So here's to our health in 2016.